Uh, very good, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to kick off today with uh, the Fraser Institute, and to introduce our speaker from the Fraser Institute, I'd like to invite the Deputy Chairman of the Friedrich Nauman Foundation, Board of Directors, Wolf Dieter Zumfurt. Welcome. Partners in the Arab world, 
the economic freedom of the Arab world, economic freedom of North America, economic freedom of the American states, of Latin America, of the Indian states. Uh, this is the Spanish translation, and it's South Africa, and uh, freedom of the uh, German states. So, uh, with that very speedy introduction, let me introduce the 2012 Economic Freedom of the World results. Here are the uh, top ten, and as always, Hong Kong is number one. And Singapore continues to nip at its heels. This must be frustrating because it's now over 40 years that Singapore has been nipping at the heels of Hong Kong. Uh, these are the lowest places in economic freedom, and as you see, there are not a lot of fun places to live or tourist destinations amongst the places that have low levels of economic freedom. In fact, life, particularly for the poor, is very miserable there. Uh, Asia, uh, economic freedom, you go from the very top to the uh, second from the bottom. Uh, my uh, PowerPoint started playing tricks with me. I didn't particularly want to highlight Cambodia. I wanted to highlight the uh, arrow below that. Uh, the Asian average with the standard double V in average. Uh, this is economic freedom uh, over time. And even though there was a setback with the uh, onslaught of the financial crisis, uh, the dip was small and it seems to have recovered. We're in perilous times now, however, for the future of economic freedom with many governments and political power parties saying we, that if the government needs a greater and greater uh, role in the economy. Uh, this gives you uh, Hong Kong, that's been pretty well constant at the top, though a recent, though a dip slightly in recent years. And of course, China continues to rise. And interestingly, uh, Asia and the world uh, track each other fairly closely. Why is economic freedom important? Economic freedom uh, is the foundation uh, of other rights and democracy. This is something the Enlightenment speaker, uh, thinkers realized early on. If you're beholden to government for your job, for promotion, for where, uh, uh, for where you live, if you can feed and clothe your family, then you're always beholden to some government uh, official, which limits your ability to talk. They are prerequisite for growth and development. Uh, as we know from more than a century of experience, individual ingenuity and drive beats government planning hands down every day of the week. And they are prerequisite for broader human growth because you, more than some distant official or coding capitalist, know what you want. The impact on development and prosperity, the most free are on this side, the least free on the, the other side. And as you can see, the average GDP of the freest nations is over $35,000 a year and well under $5,000 a year in the least free nations. More importantly, and a topic for potential hope around the world, is economically free developing nations grow much more quickly than non-economically free developing nations. Of course, many people say uh, economic freedom is fine. Uh, it produces uh, greater growth, but it's only the rich benefit. This is the income share of the poorest, 10%. And you'll see what, this is what an economist would call a random walk. Not much difference. But because economic freedom produces such growth and prosperity, relatively the same percentage of the national income makes a huge difference in the average income of the poorest 10%, over $10,000 a year in the most economically free nation, well under $1,000 a year in the least economically free nation. Economic freedom, governance, and democracy. Uh, here, uh, it's on a, uh, uh, a reverse scale. So the highest level of political rights is the lowest score. In other words, the least, the fewest obstacles to political rights. And uh, as, as, as with political rights and civil rights, the same sort of pattern. Much higher in uh, much greater levels of uh, civil and political rights in economically free nations. Economic freedom and corruption. Lack of economic freedom is the raw fuel of corruption. Uh, if you have to ask somebody for permission to do something, there's always somebody to pay off. 
if you have if there's no one to ask for permission, then you can go ahead and you don't have anyone to pay off. This is my favorite uh, chart. Uh, our leftist friends quite a while ago gave up on the idea that uh, socialism produced better economic outcomes. They said, hey, we've got to look to happiness, not economic growth, and socialism produces happiness. What the studies now show is that the people with the highest level of life satisfaction are in economically free nations. And the research suggests it's not simply a prosperity effect, but it's the effect of being able to control your own uh, life and future. I'm just going to rush through this, these slides because of time constraints and tell you that all our economic research, including all our economic freedom reports, are available on, these, on this site for free download. Sorry for rushing so much, but thank you so much for your attention.